Good evening, Jules fans. Welcome back to the latest episode of Jules and the Blood TV. It's Thursday evening, which means one thing, weekly review slash match preview. And we do have a game to look back on, but I am flying solo tonight. Um, but rest assured, there will be a full quota on Saturday. Myself, Boz and Stocky will be back together for Match Day Live, uh, when obviously we take on High Flying Ipswich, but we'll get to them in a little while. First off, though, Tuesday night at the Memorial Stadium in Bristol, we played out a one-all draw with Bristol Rovers, a late Thomas O'Connor equaliser, earning us a share of the spoils. Um, didn't go to the game and did not watch it on iFollow, so opinions are based on what I've read, what I've uh, seen on social media, etc., uh, etc. Et but yeah, looking at the statistics of the game, uh, possession pretty much even, 50.3 for the home side, 49.7 for us in terms of shots. They had 14 in total and we had 13, so nothing in that at all really. On target, 5 each. Off target, 5 each. In terms of corners, they had 2, we had 7. So, um, if you're looking at that, them statistics, um, positions in the league, you'd say that one all was probably a fair result. Obviously, I didn't go, so I can't say too much in terms of individual performances, etc. Um, but a big positive for me is obviously, again, it's uh, another game passed where we've stayed in games. We're not getting beaten heavily. If you think the two games we've lost this season, 2-1 and 1-0, Burton and Coventry respectively. So we're not being thrashed. We're not being outplayed um, over a 90-minute period. Uh, and let's be quite honest, from the games I've seen, we've we've had really good spells in in pretty much all games that I've watched live. So that's a really good positive. It was another league game where we've not conceded a goal in the second half. So eight games in now, still nothing conceded between minute 45 and minute 90. Um, and in terms of individuals, um, Thomas O'Connor, who I've already spoke about, seemed to have a really good game. Seems to be getting better and more comfortable at this level, senior football on loan from Southampton. And it seems that when we switched up to a 3-4-3 or a 3-5-2 second half to play wing-backs, um, he got better and better and found himself in the 83rd minute popping up in the six-yard box to tap home an equaliser after a shot from Connor Ogilvy, of all people, had been charged down by, uh, uh, charged down, saved by the keeper. So had a licence to bomb on a little bit more with a change of uh, role and it seems he'd done it really well. And somewhat crazily, nearly won us the game shortly after, um, reading all the reports, but his shot was blocked. Um, but yeah, so Thomas O'Connor, really good performance, getting better and better with each game. And another youngster who had to come on early doors was Jack Tucker, started in a slightly unfamiliar role at right back. Gave a good account of himself by all accounts. Um, it's his second league appearance now, the first one come two years ago, next month, I believe, when he played against Portsmouth at home, live on the telly. Um, he's one that I've never really seen have a bad game, regardless of level. Um, Seems to have all the tools to be a very accomplished centre-back at this type of level. So another one that we can be excited about, um, clearly has potential. And it'd be great to see him get more minutes this season. Whether he features on Saturday, I'm not sure. That will all depend on Barry Fuller's injury. Of yet, we're not sure what the extent of it is. Um, was listed on the match report after Tuesday night's game as a bang to the knee. Um, but yeah, by all accounts... Um, a hard-fought, keenly contested game like I suggested it would be on Monday. Um, two teams sort of mid-table at the moment, hoping to push into the top half and, and maybe beyond. And by all accounts, one all was probably a fair reflection of the game. But yeah, by all means, Jules fans, if you went, let me know. Let me know what you thought. So you know what to do. Comment down below on YouTube. Let us know on Facebook. Reply on Twitter and, and, and give us your match reports. But obviously... This Saturday, another massive game. Back-to-back -back home games on a Saturday at the, um, and back-to-back uh, -back tests as well because this lot are coming to town unbeaten. Recently relegated Ipswich Town. Um, back down at this level for the first time in a long while. Said... In my season preview, I believe that similarly to Sunderland last season, I wasn't sure how quick they would adjust, but they seem to have adjusted pretty swiftly. Uh, they're eight unbeaten. Um, I think it's eight anyway. Yeah, eight unbeaten, of which they've won five and drawn three. Um, and on the road, 
four games. They've won three of them and only drawn one. So 10 points from 12 on the road is an excellent record. Our record, as you know, is uh, two wins, three draws. No, two wins, four draws, two defeats. So proving hard to beat. Just uh, be nice if we can get over the line a couple more times. Um, but obviously there's real positive signs in the fact that we're four unbeaten in League One now. Is our longest unbeaten run since February 2018, um, which is slightly astonishing. Uh, not once during 2018-19 did we go longer than three games without defeat in the league. So um, another positive sign in terms of what we're trying to do and where we're trying to get to. And at home, which we know has been a massive issue now for probably two, three seasons, um, it's been on the decline quite steadily at first and then rapidly since that magical 2015-16 season under Justin Edinburgh. But at home this season in the league, we've only lost one out of four. We've won two of them. Um, and that's the last two back-to-back -back wins against Bolton and Wickham, scoring seven without reply. So that should fill us with confidence heading into the weekend's fixture. Um, in terms of them, we know they're going to have absolute bags of quality all over the pitch. You can look, they've got options everywhere. Um, but one man who should get an absolutely brilliant reception coming back is the big check stopper, Thomas Holy. Um a few people, I think, questioned him moving to Ipswich in the summer because of the fact that he'd said previously he wanted to test himself in the championship. But I think this is probably a great move for Thomas. He's, he's number one at Portman Road. It's a bigger club than us. That's Let's make no bones about that in terms of infrastructure, stadium, history, fan base. Huge, huge club. Don't forget, this is a team that's won UEFA Cups, um, won FA Cups, had the likes of Sir Bobby Robson in charge of them. They've had some really good players down the years. And the squad that they put together at the moment for this level is probably one of the top three in the division. So they've just run through a few names. Luke Garbert, Guion Edwards, Alan Judge, Andre Dezel, Caden Jackson up top, three and eight this season. Um, as I mentioned, Thomas Holy already. He's played eight, all eight league games for, for the Tractor Boys and he's kept five clean sheets and he's not conceded in his last four. So this is the type of test we're going to be up against in terms of having to be good defensively and having to be spot on and decisive and clinical offensively. Um, but one man who is injured, I believe, according to um, a couple of Ipswich fans who I've spoken to on Twitter, um, James Norwood, which from our point of view is only a positive sign because he's hit the ground running since arriving in the summer from Tramia Rovers and he had five in eight. Um, become a bit of a viral sensation on social media as well with his goal scoring gifts. Um, and I do believe he ended up on some amateur wrestling show and rock bottomed one of the regulars on that. So um, becoming a bit of a media star is Mr Norwood, but looks like he's going to miss out at the weekend and maybe a couple of games after that, according to a couple of reports. Um, from Ipswich fans but yeah it's going to be a huge huge game um, so yeah let's have a look at us now in terms of team news as I've already mentioned uh, the big one from Tuesday that we're keeping an eye on with bated breath is Barry Fuller Barry Fuller has recently gone past 200 club appearances um, didn't last more than a quarter of an hour on Tuesday unfortunately with this whack to his knee so we don't know what sort of internal damage if any has been done but as Steve Evans has alluded to, and as Jules fans know, the type of character that Barry is, he'll be doing all he can to get himself right and get himself out on that Priestfield pitch come 3pm Saturday afternoon. So fingers crossed that he's available. The only other one, it seems, is um, to pick up any sort of problem from the Bristol Rovers game was Mikhail and Jolly, who supposedly is a slight thigh strain, so that might put him at risk in terms of a starting place at the weekend, which would be a shame after his match-winning double last Saturday. And the only other one, I think, who's... Absent through injury is Matty Willock, who sadly just keeps breaking down at the moment and he's having treatment for this ongoing knee problem. So in terms of team selection for us, it's a tricky one because I know we played 4-4-2 uh, Diamond at home to Wickham last week and it worked really well. Then switched it up a little bit for the away game in the week and went 4-2-3-1 and then had to switch to a back three because of injury. So if we decide to go back to the Diamond, at home, then I would probably go with Jack Bonham, Barry Fuller, if fit, Max Amar, Connor Ogilvy, Thomas O'Connor. My middle four would be Alfie Jones from the base, Mark Byrne from the side, along with Ben Pringle, Ollie Lee as the 10, 
and then Brandon Hanlon and Alex Jakubiak up front. Um, back to the pairing that we started the season with, it seems. Um, but yeah, if we decide to be slightly more cautious because of the threats that the Tractor Boys are going to pose that, and went to 4-2-3-1, then I'd probably stick with the same back five. I'd have Mark Byrne and Alfie Jones as a double pivot in front of them. And I would take out probably Brandon Hanlon for Mark Marshall and play Ollie Lee in the 10, Alex Jakubiak as the centre forward with Pringle and Marshall out wide. It'd be nice to unleash both of them at the same time because at the moment it seems they one comes on for the other um, and we haven't actually got them on the pitch at the same time yet. So it'd be great to get them two back up to full speed and, and fit and firing and fingers crossed they can then start providing creativity in wide areas. So yeah, bench for me would be Joe Walsh. Um, if Barry Fuller's not fit, then I'd probably go with Lee Hodson for this one. I'd, I'd, I'd go on the side of caution and go with experience. Um, but the trick is, but but weirdly, if Barry Fuller's fit, then I'd leave Jack Tucker on the bench because he can play right back and he can play centre back. So um, that's a tricky one, and obviously one we'll keep an eye on. I'd have Stuart Keith on the bench as well, Brandon Hanlon or Mark Marshall, depending on what system we go with. Regan Charles Cook, Mikael Mandron, and hopefully Mikael and Jolly as well. Hopefully he's fit enough for the bench. Um, as always, the big question that comes up every Thursday when we start to wrap up the video is score prediction, and it's just mine for tonight, and then we'll get Stocky and Bozzy's on Saturday. Um, they're flying, absolutely flying. Not conceded for 360 minutes in the league. Like I say, they score goals at the other end. They've got threats from all over the park. But we've got good players too, and we're on a decent run of form, and it seems that we're taking small tentative steps to towards rectifying the home form that's been a real issue for the last couple of years at least. And on that basis, um, and looking at their results, they, they beat Bolton's kids 5-0, so did we. They drew with Doncaster, so did we. Uh, beat Shrewsbury recently as well. Uh, we've beaten Wickham recently. I'm not sure that them two sides are finished a million miles apart in terms of the final league standings. I know there's a, a few places between them at the moment, but I'm not sure how long-term this Wickham title challenge if you want to call that will be so there's there's a couple of results that are very very similar and based on that I'm going to say it will be an entertaining game and it will finish Gillingham 1 Ipswich 1 and my goal scorer for Gillingham is going to be Alex Jakubiak right that is enough from me as always thanks for watching thanks for listening we really appreciate it you know where we are YouTube I say it all the time, Instagram I say it all the time, Facebook I say it all the time, Twitter I say it all the time, you know what to do. Um, yeah, recently passed 200,000 views on the channel, which is absolutely mental. So thank you from myself and Stocky and Boz. It, it does mean a lot because it's just three blokes chatting about football, chatting about their hobby, um, ranting quite a lot of the time, being a Gillingham fan. But there are signs at the moment that it's that it is starting to turn and fingers crossed we can keep this unbeaten run going at the weekend. We shall see you Saturday for Match Day Live. But until next time, up the jewels. <laughs>